Well, welcome to the screencast on electric circuits. This is a continuation of topic five. This is section two. So let's talk about first what we need to have an electric circuit. Well, first of all, we need a voltage source, something to push the charge through the circuit. Uh, that's also known as an electromotive force, or EMF. And we need a conductive path for those charges to flow on. And we also know them as the wires, usually as the circuit. And the circuit board is circuit traces. And we also need a load or something to actually do some work. Uh, without that, we have uh, a short circuit, and that's not a good thing. That's a dangerous situation. Um, so a load could be a bulb, a motor, could be a kitchen appliance, could be your favorite electronics uh, device. And that's the most fundamentally what we need, voltage source, conductive path, and a load. So we're going to use some circuit uh, diagram symbols uh, to draw some circuits. Um, this is a cell right here. This is a battery. Usually a number of cells together make up a battery, uh, but just a single cell like a D cell would be something like this right here. If we stack two or more together, it might look something like that. This is the symbol for a bulb. Uh, it's called a lamp act, uh, also. Uh, a switch is like a little door that can open and close. And this is a resistor down here. So these would be the ones we um, would probably see the most. Um, in addition, here's a, a meter, a voltmeter. And over here we have an ammeter. So here's an example of a, a battery and a bulb connected with some wires. Now, if I gave you this and told you to make it, you probably could do it. But it's a little dangerous because it could change all the time. I might make the wires separate, the batteries a little different, the bulb different picture, um, uh, different connection schemes, could be messy. Um, anyway, this is not a universal language. This is over here. So this is how we're going to want to represent a circuit diagram. Here's a single cell, a battery that consists of a longer side here and a shorter side. The um, longer side is the positive, and this is the bulb. So here's our complete circuit path with one bulb. This is the same thing, but with a resistor instead of a bulb. Now Kirchhoff was a fellow. There he is. You can give him a round of applause. Uh, he lived um, from here to here, and he invented a couple important circuit rules. And one of them was his junction rule, and that he talked about. Well, he said this here, and it essentially is uh, currents. When you have a current coming down, like cars coming down a road, and the road splits. Well, the number of cars that go off each of the splits has got to be the number of cars that came into the uh, the split. So in terms of current, we have this current coming down here, and it splits off into these two, I2 and I3. And essentially what the junction rule says is that I1 has got to be the sum of I2 and I3. It's kind of like another way of saying conservation of charge. Here's an example. We have a circuit. We have two batteries. And we have uh, three bulbs connected like this. We have a circuit path coming down here with one bulb and another path that has two bulbs in it. So if there is four amps flowing through this bulb along this path, and there are two amps flowing down this path here, so the two amps is going to flow around here, up here, and it's going to rejoin the four amps from this path and create six amps in this part of the uh, circuit. And that indeed is what the ammeter is reading. He also that is Kirchhoff, had a, a voltage drop rule, or a voltage loop rule, and he said essentially the sum of the voltage drops around a complete loop would be zero, or in this case, the sum of the voltage drop around a, um, uh, the components here would equal the battery voltage. So for example, if we had a voltmeter here, number one, and voltmeter number two, and we're going to measure the voltage drop from one side of this resistor to the other, and this meter is going to measure the voltage drop from one side of this resistor to the other, and if we do that, those two together should equal the voltage of the battery. Another way to see that, well, there's algebraically, there it is here, but this is this point right here in the battery, since it's connected by a wire all the way over here, anywhere on this wire is, is at the same voltage. So you could put your voltmeter anywhere here, and likewise, anywhere on this path, from over to here, over to here, over to here, up to this point, it's the exact same place electrically. So you can see from here to here is battery voltage V. So therefore, from here to here should also be V. And this is in an applet that's used to compare. Oh, sorry, it's used to compare um, circuit uh, current flow to uh, water flow. 
And uh, here's the apple right here. It's operating. So here we have a water tank down here. The water's pumped up to this upper tank by this pump. And then it flows through gravity down past this uh, paddle wheel, turns it, and perhaps it does some work. Maybe it makes some electricity or grinds some corn or something like that. But we have this, um, this difference in height of the water. And that's analogous to the battery voltage. Uh, likewise, over here we have the electrical analogy separated by this red line. And we have a voltage source that's pumping the, pushing the charge through the, the circuit uh, and through this electrical load, which is a bulb. And then we can change the pressure or the voltage to high. So the pump is now on high speed and it's pumping more water up here into this upper tank. So we have greater height, which is analogous to a greater voltage. And greater um, height of the water here creates greater pressure. More water flows down, turns the paddle wheel faster and grind your corn faster. Likewise, we have uh, an increase of voltage here, so we're pushing more charge, greater pressure to push uh, more charge through the uh, circuit, and the bulb is indeed brighter. I'll turn that back down. So there we go. All right, I'm going to close this. So there's that, and this is a this is a also a an applet from. Uh, FET, P-H-E-T. So if you go visit the, it's the University of Colorado, uh, their website, they have this applet. And um, this uh, also shows, I'll let Java load here, shows the uh, situation with uh, battery and uh, resistor. I'm sorry, you can't see all of it. There's more over here. And I can um, increase the resistance. So that would make the current less. And you can see there's now less charge flowing. The paddle wheel is turning more slowly. Um, but I can also increase the voltage from 2 or 3 volts up to like 10 volts or somewhere in there. And you can see that the resistance is increasing, but since I've increased the voltage, the, uh, the current is increased also. But we're generating more heat or more power dissipation in the resistor. So you can see the temperature's gone up on that. You can also notice that um, this applet has decided to show the charge flowing from the negative end. These must be electrons then flowing from the negative end of the battery back to the positive end. But still notice the, the current is positive. So remember we define the current as the flow of positive charge, which essentially means a lack of electron. So it's actually opposite the direction of the electron flow. Okay, I'm going to close this. And there's another uh, DC circuit simulator from FET where you can actually build your own and put in uh, voltmeters and ammeters and different number of batteries, resistors, you know, make your own wire paths, etc. It's pretty cool. We're going to experiment with that in class, so I'll wait to, for till then to uh, show you that. Okay, and uh, that's all we're going to do for um, uh, electrical circuits where we talk about series uh, connections next. Okay, bye.